Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing interview series. My name is Maiva Fuentes. Today I'm speaking to Matt Lando, who is a star in the vacation rental industry. Um, he is the founder of VRMB, which is a media and educational um, website company for short-term rental operators. So we're going to be talking about whether short-term rental operators are still buying new tech. Are they still investing in tech today? The answer is yes. Uh, what kind of tech they're investing in and what these new emerging players in the vacation rental and short-term rental scene can do to actually stand out and get in touch with these short-term rental operators. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Uh, let's jump on in. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. Today, I'm very excited to have Matt Lando all the way from Miami, Florida. He is the founder of VRMB, uh, which is a media company which provides vacation rental hosts with the latest trends, best practices in the vacation rental industry. He's been called the Tony Robbins of the vacation rental industry, uh, and I'm really excited to have you here today. Thank you, Matt. How are you? I'm great. Although Tony Robbins lately has had some bad press, so I'm not sure I, I, I should stick with that line anymore, but I'm, I'm great and I'm happy to be here. How are you, Maya? I'm also great and I'm happy to be here with you. Um, right. I'm, I'm uh, just finished lunch, so I guess it's early, relatively early for you over there. Yes, I just drank my triple espresso. I'm ready to roll. Amazing. That sounds really strong. I hope you're not gonna have too many of those today. <laughs> I usually drink one in the morning um, after my swim, and then I will drink one in the afternoon around three or 4 p.m. and I have like a little second morning yeah. jolt of, of caffeine. <laughs> Amazing. I, I'm, I said don't have too many, but I also just had like my fourth coffee of the day. So we're, I guess we're around the same. The same amount. Yeah, you know, we're, we're in a global pandemic right now. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Coffee, <laughs> great. Amazing. So tell me a little bit about VRMB uh, and how you got into it. I know that you also were in property management, or maybe you still are, but <clears throat> tell us a little backstory. Um, I ran my own vacation rental business in the historic district of Panama City, Panama for almost 10 years, and that was my... Uh, on the ground learning experience. Uh, like a lot of other owners and managers, I did everything uh, the hard way, <laughs> trial and error. And this, these were early days before Airbnb. So it was actually about creating diverse marketing portfolios uh, for your business. We were in the destination that was very new. I was the only luxury accommodation in town so this was really a wonderful learning environment. There was nobody to take my, my place when we screwed up. I say we, I was involved with in that business with a, uh, a business partner. And we just kind of um, just worked our way through what it meant to be great hosts, what it meant to run a profitable business. Over the course of that time, I began documenting which marketing practices were working in generating more bookings. At the time, there was very little online. There were no places you could go and learn how to build uh, direct bookings, for instance. And that simple first step of archiving my best practices eventually evolved into uh, a suite of eBooks, which eventually became VRMB, which is now uh, sort of a broader educational platform for owners and managers around the world. Amazing. That's a great story. Do you still run that listing? No, I sold, I sold Los Cuatro Tulipanes about two and a half years ago. So I am officially a property management list. Uh, but now I get to live vicariously through all of, all of my colleagues. Amazing. So what are, the, I think the people that are listening to this podcast right now, they are, a lot of them are in tech, they're in SaaS, and they're lost at how to reach these Airbnb hosts who just like them have been hit so hard by this crisis. Um, what is the, how can tech companies right now help or what kind of educational resources are 
property managers and owners and hosts needing right now? Um, that's a big question. So I like to think that uh, Airbnb hosts, the way you phrased it, represents one uh, demographic, one community of, of potential clients. Uh, I like to think that professional owners and managers represent another. It's not to say that they're entirely mutually exclusive. Uh, there are a lot of owners and managers in the professional sphere who use Airbnb to generate bookings. But I've found that there's not a whole lot of people in the Airbnb community who see themselves running a, a bigger business than just an Airbnb um, thing. So first, it's important to separate those two kinds of potential clients. I think the Airbnb group is extremely uh, passionate. A lot of them have gotten started relatively recently. Um, Airbnb, of course, is a very powerful platform. Uh, a lot of them have taken big hits over the course of the last few months, both because of travel restrictions as a result of the pandemic and uh, based on some decisions that Airbnb has made um, in throwing their hosts under the bus. I'm just going to come out and say it. Uh, there's some major uh, priority issues with that company um, in terms of the community that they, they say they have built. Um, so I think this has been a big wake up call for that Airbnb group that uh, you may be running a profitable business right now, but if the platform that you're running it on decides to make a decision that compromises your revenue, you're, you're, you have no control. And that's a very stress, stressful position to be in. Um, that's a very uh, unsustainable position to be in. Uh, which is why I think a lot of those Airbnb hosts have started to look at broader diversified marketing tactics right now. And then we get into that second group of professional owners and managers who do use all the listing sites. It's really important to point out that it's not like um, they have chosen to go uh, cold turkey on them. The listing sites generate the single best return on an investment uh, that an owner or manager can make. So it's important to use those listing sites to your advantage, but not to be dependent on them. Mm -hmm. And when we look at these professional owners and managers, what are they dealing with right now? They're dealing with a lot of the same things um, that, that I just mentioned, um, how the pandemic and various travel restrictions has just completely upended uh, their 2020 booking flow. Uh, they're also looking at a lot of the listing sites beyond just Airbnb, Verbo, another instance, doing things that um, are outside of their control and that really threaten the livelihood of their businesses. So I think in the same sense as the Airbnb folks, this has been a, this shakeup has really forced the professional owners and managers to reassess their relationships with all the listing sites. Uh, but circling back to where you where the question began, how can we as um, service providers help these people? It's exclusively through education and seeing that there is a path to a more diversified marketing portfolio. It's funny because in this industry, people use listing sites synonymous with marketing. Like I have listings up, I generate bookings, I'm a marketing pro. And as you well know, um, that is one of one piece of the puzzle, but there's all these other things that you need to be working on. And we have become jaded into thinking that um, that is synonymous with success. So the folks that I work with uh, have begun long ago, sort of planting seeds, uh, practicing nurture marketing, which takes time to build up relationships with guests, which takes time uh, to build campaigns and to build content and all these things that other businesses outside of vacation rentals, this is you know normal to them. But for us, we have again become so jaded with these listing sites. It's become so easy and fast to generate a booking. So I think that this, the software providers look back to education. How can we provide helpful information for these folks to truly build sustainable marketing portfolios and none of it is really rocket science, but it does take time. It does take patience. And I've always believed that the, the most compelling way to do that is to show 
these managers the map, the roadmap. What are the pieces that you're gonna need in what order uh, so that they don't get overwhelmed, so that they don't think that they need to do search engine optimization before their business even has a name, before they even have a website. I have people say like, Matt, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm trying to do PPC, but I don't have a website yet. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. We have to see that there's a process here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So showing that there's a process, shining a little bit of light on the sequential nature of, of nurture marketing, I think is... Again, not rocket science, but one of the most helpful thing that the services providers can be doing. So, okay, so it sounds like before you even show them how to do marketing, how to do SEO, you have to explain to them Airbnb is not, just slapping your listing onto Airbnb is not marketing. In fact, you run a business. This is what other businesses yeah. do, let me show you. Yeah. <laughs> and it is, it is a mentality shift. Um, it goes from thinking that the listing site was the leg of your table to realizing that the listing site is one leg of a much bigger table. Uh, so at BRMB, we have a methodology called listing site independence. Uh, we have a self grader, which I can share with you, uh, which is just a free little self assessment tool. Stage one is taking advantage of all the listing sites out there to generate bookings. Stage two is realizing that you actually kind of need your own brands. So you need to begin coming up with a name and the logo. Um, and then stage three, you begin sort of building the foundation, a website, an email newsletter, um, some proper communication when guests depart. And then stage four is some of these more advanced marketing techniques, search engine optimization, PPC, PR, all these things that they shouldn't even think about until they have all those steps in place. So yes, I do believe that the, the process is a learning one and helping people see that when they turn that corner, all of a sudden, anything is possible. But until they turn that corner uh, to, the wor to the worm and the horseradish, the world is horseradish. The, the listing sites are all that they see. Um, so yes, I do believe showing them the roadmap and also taking it a step at a time so that it's not too overwhelming of a process is important as well. Absolutely. So I know that obviously you do offer training in vacation rental marketing for these operators. Um, but do you, I, I, I'm also sure you're active in, in several communities where these operators are present. Um, do you think that marketing right now is the number one, uh, I was going to say concern, but not concern, but the number one topic that they are, that's, that's biggest right now that they're trying to address? Or is there anything else that uh, these tech companies can educate them about? Um, there's a hierarchy of needs over the course of my 12 years in this industry across the board, no matter where I travel, no matter what interviews I do. Um, the number three, the top three priorities of owners and managers is bookings, bookings, and bookings. <laughs> that still stands. If you speak with any owner or manager, they want more bookings now. Uh, but I do think that post pandemic, there are some priorities that have risen up that hierarchical ladder. Uh, you have things like cleaning protocol, which mm -hmm. is now more important than ever before. You have the use of technology, which is greater than we've ever uh, had before, more options, but it's also more overwhelming and confusing to the newcomer than it's ever been. Um, so how to pick the right tool, what these tools even do and how they fit together in a smooth and streamlined business. Um, so I would say, yeah, booking still always number one, cleaning very, very close second in terms of safety protocol uh, and third processes, systems, technology that can make your business more efficient. So do you think they, are they buying new tech right now? Are oh yeah, a, a plenty of plenty of vendors that I know have had record months um, okay. in June and July. Yeah, which, which it's kind interesting. Of services or which kind of technology is it? Software is a big one. It's a it's a very massive and complicated move switching over to a new property management software or adopting one t for the, for the first time. Yeah, it takes a lot of time and energy, and the fact that a lot of people have empty bookings, booking calendars right now is basically a perfect fit for that. 
a lot of people have taken the opportunity to make that move um, in the downtime. So property management software, this is a huge one. Um, simple things like uh, digital guest books. You know, a lot of owners and managers have always known they that the little crumpled up paper or guest book sitting on the counter. And I know because I used one of those in my rentals forever, it's all like stained with wine and who knows what. Uh, they've known that that needs to go digital, but they've never really taken the time to do it. So in that same vein, a little bit of a lull in bookings has allowed for them to convert their uh, guidebooks into digital guidebooks. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Andy from um, Touchstay told yeah. me he had a record, a record month. Um, digital uh, smart home automation, things like um, digital locks, more important than ever before. Again, requires time and energy to install, to actually switch over. This is a perfect moment for that. Um, cleaning um, automation, as they say, apps like Breezeway that, ha that make communication with your cleaning team uh, more efficient and clear record months. Yeah. Um, so I would say all kinds of tech that solves a good solution is, is, is in a really, really nice position right now. Um, but it is important to help people see what is the role of that tool. Yeah. Uh, what will it mean to their bit, their bottom line? Um, and ultimately how do we hold people's hands and walk them through, through the onboarding process? Yeah. So uh, I know that in the short-term rental industry, a huge thing is affiliates and word of mouth. The community is small. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's pretty tight knit. There's a couple of groups that everybody's in and they kind of just recommend each other tools. And that's how a lot of these technology companies are growing. But there's so many new players, as you're saying, it's starting to get a little overwhelming. What can new tech do today to kind of stand out uh, you know, when they might not have as much access as to these communities as the older players? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. So first you actually need to do something unique. So just thinking that because you have a, you know, digital welcome book, that's great. Um, and you're entering a new industry that it's just going to catch is not that unique. There, there are companies that are doing that before. So I think the first big helpful element would be you're actually doing something that is unique. Yeah. Of course, that comes with a caveat. No one knows what the hell you're talking about <laughs> because our industry is so new. And if you're doing something new in it, people are like, I still don't understand what that company does. Um, so learning how to explain what you do concisely is imperative. Um, the best way to learn how to explain what you do is talking with users. And if I was a new tech provider, I would handpick the most influential property managers in each market and do anything I could to get them a free version of my tool, grandfathered for life in exchange for feedback, in exchange for really just hearing them describe what the tool is. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of tech people are in their own little worlds and they don't have enough conversation with users. They don't use the verbiage or the, the terminology that users use. They use SaaS. I still personally don't even know what SaaS is, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's I don't know what current. B2B is. Whenever I hear people say B2B, I'm like, I always have to go through my head like, wait, what does that mean again? So property managers don't use that terminology. And I think understanding the terminology that they do use and communicating with them in their language is very, very powerful. And lastly, I would say showcasing people who are using that tool effectively without just promoting the hell out of your business. So it's very easy when you have a, um, an all-star user to go out and say, Maiva's the best, she's doing this and she's using our tool. 
Okay, that's great. We're interested in Maiva, but we're not interested in your tool. Tell us more <laughs> about Maiva. Tell us more about the things that she's doing that are different. It just so happens that she's using your tool. That's great. And that's subtly going to make me more interested in learning more about it. But if I could do one magic wand thing to all the uh, tech companies out there, I would remove their company from all of their copy. Yeah. And I would talk about the individual owners and managers, what they are doing that is innovative, showcase those stories, and then subtly place your brand next to it. That's the way to really capture people's attention. It's, it's opposite of what you might think. But in a new industry where there's just so much noise and chaos and sales pitches, I think it's the, the most pleasant way to go yeah. about communicating your product. Absolutely, because in my experience, I talk to a lot of um, short-term rental operators when I'm doing backup, when I'm doing research for content strategy for my clients. And um, they're all just so interested in what other hosts are doing. Because a lot of them are in it by themselves. Uh, they are doing everything through trial and error. So they're like, well, if I can just get access to some other hosts and figure out how they're solving this problem, how are they getting more bookings here? How are they dealing with this cleaning issue? And it, it is very interesting to see, okay, how, are, how is this other person using this tool? But what's interesting mm -hmm. about what you said, uh, which I find perhaps a little bit contradictory, not contradictory, but a challenge, is uh, how, for example, if you have a, an innovative prod product, people don't know what it is. So at the same time, you have to explain exactly what your product does, but you have to do it without talking about your product. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's hard. Amazing. It's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's very hard. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, aren't all the great, the best things hard? Yeah. Um, I wanted to add two quick things especially during this pandemic time when there's not going to be conferences in which you can go and meet your clients in person, take a road trip, go and visit them, wh whoever is nearby, uh, book their vacation rental for a couple days or a couple nights, uh, ask for the opportunity to go in and see their operations. Here's another huge one. Actually try running a vacation rental business. There's yeah. an oftentimes a disconnect between people who grow up and or develop their product in the tech world that actually have never managed a property before. And they talk about things in one way when in reality, it's a completely different way on the ground. So I love when I meet vendors who go and manage properties. I, I know a couple of the companies are act actively doing this on a regular basis. All new employees come in, become part of the vacation rental management side of the business so different than hearing tech people from the tech office talk about what they think the solution is because on the ground it's a very very different yeah. thing oftentimes yeah it's also interesting that you said have have these property owners or property managers uh, operators describe the product back to you because especially if you like if you are just fully in this tech world you're thinking about series a funding uh, functionalities and and in a totally different language and totally different pain points. Um, just having somebody describe your product to you might not be at all what you expect. You're like, oh, is that right. how you see it? <laughs> right. Yes. Which, yeah, it's yeah. so different. And this is true about vacation rentals too, if anyone's watching this who is a manager. The way your guests describe your destination and your home is oftentimes far more powerful than you could ever do. So in my vacation rentals in Panama, I had a guest that came into Casca. We, this neighborhood is very weird. It's a historic district. It was dilapidated and run down for many, many years. Uh, it was on the up, but it was still just bizarro. And I had always struggled communicating to potential guests what it was like. And this one guest, he's like, oh, this is amazing. This is like the French Quarter in New Orleans, but a hundred years ago. Oh. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. And I wrote that down and that became a key phrase that we used in our marketing. So yeah, really listening. And obviously listening is a powerful tool in any relationship, but in a new industry, especially if you have a new product, listening to the way that your users describe it and then stealing those words and using yes. them in your marketing, surefire way to get forward. Absolutely. It's so much faster and easier and way more effective to literally steal those words out of their mouths. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Amazing. And also try to describe it in like one sentence, what you're doing. If you got a new tool, if you can't describe it in one sentence or like you just go on and on and on and on, it, people don't have the attention span for that, much less the brain capacity to understand it. So you got to find a way to describe it quickly and concisely and accurately. Yeah. Especially for short-term mental operators, because they are like, I got a million things going on. I got a million tools, vendors coming to me. Uh, I can't deal with this. So yes. you're able to just directly, okay, we you put all, link all of your calendars in one place so you don't have to worry about double bookings. Even that's yeah. too long, maybe, but right. this, this is what we do. This is how it solves your problem. And here's an, here's an interesting way to, do, to, to go about figuring that out. Find a tool or an analogy in, in, an, in normal life, something that people would be familiar with that your tool accomplishes in this new space. So like, uh, this is gonna be an extreme exaggeration example, but you'll get the idea. When this new company, Swimply, it's called Swimply, no joke, says, we're the Airbnb for pools. Okay. You kind of understand what it is. Okay, yeah. I know what Airbnb is. It's a pool that rents, you know, people rent this pool out in the spare time. Exaggeration, strange name, probably a niche that won't work, but it's a technique that's used in film a lot. They'll say it's the you know Blade Runner of food or whatever. That's another terrible yeah, example. That I can't really imagine. <laughs> yeah, another terrible example. But if you find some analogy that people are familiar yeah. with in normal life, and you say it's that we do that, but for your vacation rental business or for your, all your bookings then it's a, a nice way to connect it again. Yeah, that's a that's a really good example. I've seen that a lot, like we're the Uber of X or the Airbnb, yeah. but it has to be right. something, some unicorn company, something huge that everybody knows A, what it is and what it does. And even if you use something beyond just a company, like in something that people experience in their day-to-day -day lives, like, um, or, or are familiar with. So let me use the example of, um, I describe VRMB's inner circle as a conveyor belt of best practices. Okay. People know what a conveyor belt is. It yeah. moves along and there's things practice. on it and you can take it off, put on, add in, whatever. Um, again, a simple, maybe a not so great example, but things in life that people are familiar with that can be used to reflect or mirror what you do. I think that's a nice little hack to get closer yeah. to the answer there. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been super valuable. And I think it will be very valuable to everybody who's listening or reading the blog post that is kind of going to come with this. Um, do you have anything to add? I don't think so. That was great. Uh, yeah. To all the tech people, good luck. This is a wonderful industry. Uh, it's growing rapidly, lots of new money flowing in. Don't lose sight of the core stakeholders, the owners and the managers on the ground. If you get to know them, you can crack the entire thing open. 100%. Um, so if anybody wants to connect with you, I know that they can find you on LinkedIn, which is where I found you. Twitter, I think you're also active on it. Um, and then I guess your website, vrmb.com. Excellent news. You got it. You got Thank you. <laughs> thank you thanks Maiva uh, thank you and I will yeah drop all, I'll drop all the links below so if anybody wants drop to it drop it like it's hot <laughs> all right well thank you and have a wonderful day you too ciao ciao thanks for listening to this episode of the flying cat marketing series if you enjoy this interview please give it a like share it with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to this channel Stay tuned because next week I'll be interviewing another leader in the SaaS and startup world talking about their challenges and achievements. See you there.